Oh my god. Wait a second. That is insane. It is rock hard. Oh my god. We are moving along in my current makeup declutter series. By your request, today I'll be doing an eyeshadow declutter. Now this is gonna be another two-parter because I do have two drawers dedicated to my eyeshadows that are both full. Today I'll be focusing on my mini eyeshadow palettes and my single eyeshadows, and then I'll come back and do my larger eyeshadow palettes in another video. Not sure how long this is gonna be because this drawer is overflowing, so let's just dive in. And here we have my first eyeshadow drawer. So like I mentioned, this is the drawer that I keep my smaller eyeshadow palettes in as well as eyeshadow singles, whether those be pots or liquid and cream eyeshadows. It's all in here, plus we do have glitters as well. I do wanna set aside the new Essence eyeshadow palettes because these are brand new. I did do a full video on them where I swatched all of them for you. I did looks with all of them, so if you want to check that out I will leave the link below but for now these are going to be keeps and we'll just fast forward through that so right on top here we have the warrior by Juvia's place palette I love the artwork that they use on their palettes and that's part of the reason why I feel like I hold on to their palettes way longer than I should um, in general I just don't reach for this palette much anymore it is a beautiful mixed of warm and cool toned neutral palette I actually used to use this sort of as a duo eye and face palette because I could use these two shades as a face highlight. I could kind of work this as a bronzer if I really wanted to. In general, it is a pretty good palette. I felt overall that it does lean more shimmery though because there are six shimmers and only three mattes. And I don't know, I just felt a little limited. I just don't reach for it anymore. Even though the quality is amazing, like the theme of all of these declutters, I'm really trying to only hold on to what I'm actually using. So I think this is going to be a declutter. This is the Undone Beauty Curator Eye Quad. I absolutely love this eyeshadow formula. I show this a lot more in depth in my makeup $10 and under that beats out high-end video. But this eyeshadow formula reminds me so much of Bare Minerals and Urban Decay combined. So here are just a few quick swatches. Like I said, I show this way more in depth in that video, so go check that out. Next, I'm seeing a definite keep. This is one of the e.l.f. bite-sized eyeshadow palettes in Hot Jalapeno. I love this color story and the selection of shades that they put in this particular palette is just perfect. It's so hard to find good green eyeshadow palettes and this one is just really really nice. Let's see if I can do a good <laughs> four-in-one swatch there. Yeah you can kind of see that pigmentation and that was not even like a legit swatch but look at this beautiful green. The gold is great. Yeah this is a definite keep. Okay, so I do wanna kind of go under here for a second. This is an eyeshadow palette from Revlon. They had these So Fierce four pan palettes, and I know that I have a couple more in here. There's actually one that I like better in here. This is the one that I actually use. This one is called Clap Back, and this blue is just insane. It's beautiful. Um, I also have Fully Loaded, which is a pop of green amongst neutrals, and then tantrum has like a copper in it amongst neutrals this formula is just it's a little bit tricky because they don't necessarily blend out well like I feel like all of these work really well as lid shades but to create a cohesive look just with one palette alone in my opinion is pretty hard with this palette which like I said is the one that I use the most I usually do like the blue on the eye and maybe I'll do a halo moment I'll either put like the light purple or the champagne in the middle and I'll try to use this sort of brown color to blend out and use as a transition, but it, it never quite looks as soft as I want it to because they're all just so punchy and they don't, they just don't blend easily. But look at this blue, it is insane. It is so beautiful. It has this metallic look, even just applying dry. So honestly, I wish I could just have this color. The other shades in this particular palette are pretty. I do like this sort of grayish purple as well. Again, something I'd use on my lid. This gray silver that looks good. Um, 
with either of them as a halo. So I really think I'm only gonna keep this palette because in terms of these, the this one's just kind of boring to me and I feel like I have this sort of color scheme in formulas that are way easier to work with. And then this one, the green's okay, but it's not like paired with other shades that I would really want together. It's not my favorite shade of green. So I think I'm only gonna keep clap back out of those three. Let's go into this palette. This is from Catrice, their Basic Bay Eyeshadow Palette. Catrice actually has some pretty great eyeshadow palettes and they totally get slept on. This is a very, very solid neutral palette. It does have a mix of warm and cool tones. I would say overall it leans a little bit more cool though. But these shadows, whether it's the mattes or the shimmers, they are just so velvety soft. It's crazy. I'm just going to dip into a couple of them. Like it's just so soft to the touch, but then when you start actually applying them too, oh my gosh, this gold is insane. It's like solid metallic. Oh my God, that's so beautiful. It's been, it's been a second since I've reached for this palette. It's definitely not something that you should ignore if you see it, if you want kind of an all-in-one neutral eyeshadow palette. I know we kind of all have our go-to favorite neutrals, but this is just a great year-round staple to have. I am going to keep it because I like recommending this. I don't think a lot of people know about it. Speaking of Catrice, they also have this one. This is the Next Gen Nudes palette. This was at Ulta for like a hot second and then you couldn't find it. And then the brand announced that they were actually pulling out of Ulta, which I am so sad about, but they will still be available on Amazon as well as on their website for US buyers. This was a really pretty rosy nude type of palette. I was just talking about this type of color theme in another video. It's a little played out, but again, Catrice has a great <laughs> eyeshadow formula. Another really solid um, neutrals palette if this is more the tones that you like to use on your eyes. We got those like dusty roses, the rose golds, and we do have like these chunkier glitters in here. I'm not a huge fan of those, but they make for something interesting. Yeah, this rose gold is beautiful. You can see how soft the shadows are. They're a little crumbly but very, very pigmented. While we're here, this is the eyeshadow palette that I showed in my video that I did a couple weeks ago where I was giving products one last shot before I actually decluttered them. And this is very similar. I mean, we have those chunky glitters, we have the rose gold and sort of the berry tones, but using this again in that video, it made me realize that this was actually kind of a hard uh, texture to work with in terms of the shimmer shades. And I would much rather use this because that is gorgeous. <laughs> so I think, you know, with these being, very, very similar. I think I'd rather keep the Catrice and I'll declutter the Physician's Formula. Okay, you can kind of see my keep pile over here in the corner. It's a little bigger than I was hoping we'd be at this point, but there's still so much of this drawer to go. So let's keep going. Here we have the Pop Beauty Light Show Palette in Fire Pit. This is very much like a warm, orangey type of palette. And I always, forget about this. This has some actual packed glitter shades in here that probably would be better if I swatched with like a glitter glue, but just so you can see, uh, so beautiful. Oh my gosh, that is gorgeous. And that's without a glitter glue, y'all. <laughs> we also have this yellow, eh, it's a little chalky. I like the idea of the pressed glitters though, just because it's a little bit easier to like load up on a brush or even your finger to apply versus like in a pot. The thing is looking at this palette, aside from the pressed glitters, I'm not like super excited about any of the shades and they're not performing all that well, just even swatching them. Like they're okay, you know what I mean? They're a little sheer. The pressed glitters are awesome, but I don't think it's worth keeping a whole palette for two shades. And now I'm never ever gonna get this glitter off, huh? <laughs> it's just gonna spread, damn. 
Moving along, we have the CoverGirl True Naked Smoky Palette. Now, what's ironic is in my last eyeshadow declutter that I did like a few years ago, I decluttered this and then I ended up buying it again to do my Cruella makeup tutorial. And I realized that it's actually just a good palette to keep around for those cool toned smoky eyeshadow looks. The shimmers are beautiful. We've got this like really nice rich matte black. I think people also sleep on the CoverGirl eyeshadow formula. Okay, wait, that was not good. <laughs> I'm like reaching around my microphone, which is what's making this so awkward. So those are just a few shades. You can see that they are nice and buildable and rich. Look at this gorgeous gunmetal gray. So, you know, I wasn't using this a lot when I originally had it, but knowing that I can use it for some more creative looks, especially because we're moving into winter and these are definitely shades that I gravitate towards, I am gonna hold on to it for now and hopefully it actually gets use out of its second life. Um, I don't know why <laughs> this color pop blush is in here, but this is a declutter, so. <laughs> oh, I think I might've dumped some face products in here by accident because they were like small compacts. Okay, and then here's another Essence one that I'm keeping. Let's move on. Okay, so this is obviously jumping out at me. This is the Too Faced Tutti Fruity palette. There were two of these. This one is called Sparkling Pineapple. And then, oh, here's the second one. This one is Razzle Dazzle. These I love. I absolutely love the Too Faced eyeshadow formula. And these I remember being really affordable. I am not sure if they still sell them because I know in general the Tutti Fruity line was sort of like limited edition. Ooh, these still have their scents to them as well. It's like a tropical fruity scent. Um, hmm. Okay, so first off, I have not used these in a while. Second off, this looks like a lot of other eyeshadow palettes that I have right now, even though the formula is so good, I'm just not reaching for this. I feel like I'm more prone to keeping the berry palette because it's just such a clear, distinct color story. This is, you know, it's your neutral palette with a pop of green, but I also haven't used either of them in at least a year and a half. <laughs> I should take that as it's okay to part with these. <laughs> this is the Revlon and Wonder Woman collaboration palette. This whole collection like flew off the shelves. It was released way before the movie because the movie got delayed, but the makeup collection itself was awesome. And I actually really enjoyed sort of what they did with this palette. It's almost like two quads and then two highlighter shades. The pigmentation was not half bad either. Okay, not bad at all. I'll admit I have not used this probably since it came out. That blue leaves a little bit to be <laughs> desired. The pink is nice though, but hmm, even though it's special, I love the packaging. I gotta be okay with letting limited edition products go. They are not something I need to hoard. It's definitely something that I used to do a lot in the past and products would just pile up. So we have the ColourPop Boudoir Noir palette. I actually really enjoy this. You know what's so funny is that this reminds me a lot of the Too Faced palette that I just decluttered. In general, we've got the pop of green, the pop of gold amongst neutrals. I absolutely love the ColourPop formula. And this is obviously something that I'd probably talk about more on my channel anyway, considering that it is more budget friendly. But with how ColourPop releases and then never restocks their products, I cannot tell you whether or not this is still available anywhere. I got mine at Ulta, but I will hold on to it for now. Here we have another for sure keep. This is the Naked 3 Urban Decay palette or the Naked 3 Mini, excuse me. This I absolutely love. I love when they come out with their Naked Mini palettes because they're obviously more affordable than the full size, but you really get a good collection of the shades that make the palette special. And this was just a really nice, mauve cool toned palette. And obviously the Urban Decay shadow formula is bomb. So if you've always kind of wondered about the probably most popular palette from the brand, but you didn't want to necessarily fork out the big bucks, this is always a good way to add just a little bit of Urban Decay to your collection. Okay, we have this Catkin palette that I actually use today. I'm definitely going to keep it. Catkin is a Chinese beauty brand that you can find on Amazon and they have this beautiful packaging. Just look at this detailing. They also have those like hand carved lipsticks that have whole scenes like within the lipstick bullet itself. Now this palette is a little bit more like spring and summer. You can make it wearable year round if you want. So today I just put this 
this kind of peachy shade with the dark brown and this green brown shifty on my lid and it turned out to be a pretty nice fall makeup look but the quality is there this is a cruelty free brand and in general they just spend as much time on the outside of the makeup as they do on the inside which I really like those are just a few of the shimmers this is the really cool like pinky greeny shade that I have on my lid I just love how that shifts I do see two of these little Revlon palettes now these I really enjoy the formula of them and the color themes I just don't like the packaging and I don't like how tiny they are I'm pretty sure these are like ten dollars each and these palettes are so freaking small but not even just the palette itself but the pans it actually makes it a little hard to use because dipping a brush in here without getting a little bit of the shade next to it can be tricky now this Maverick palette which is kind of a warm neutrals this I identified as a dupe or a really close alternative to the Urban Decay Naked Reloaded palette. There were a lot of similar shades and I actually found this one to apply just a tiny bit more punchy and pigmented and it lasted a little bit better throughout the day. So like I said, this is a great formula, but for $10, you're just not getting a lot of every shade. With the Enigma palette, this one I very, very rarely use. It looks like they were going for a berry purple theme, but then we have like two nudish shades that are so close to one another. We've got two champagnes, albeit this one's a little bit more like bronzy, but I don't know. I just feel like this mix of colors just doesn't make a lot of sense to me. But again, the actual formula, sorry, this is really hard to swatch because of this size. Um, the actual formula of the shadows is pretty darn good. And I'd love to see more of this from Revlon and something a little easier to use. You can see how soft the mattes are. They are a little crumbly, kind of going in there hard. But look at that rich, like dusty purple. We've got this berry maroon, but yeah, it's definitely messy for sure. As far as the Maverick palette goes, I don't know if I want to keep this. I haven't really kept anything quite as like warm and sultry yet, at least out of my mini palettes. Now we do have this one that's kind of like a little mini version of it, the Wet n Wild Color Icon palette, which I absolutely adore. Obviously this expands on it. It's a similar theme, but we have a little more options. These are definitely similar. Are are they worth keeping both? I feel like I can justify keeping it. I think I'm gonna keep both and we'll see what happens next time around. All right, next up I have this Flower Beauty Quad. I remember this being a little bit more expensive than I would typically pay for a quad. I wanna say it was like 10 or more dollars. This one is in Petal Play. Definitely pretty for the fall but the shadows are very pretty. These pinky swatches aren't really coming out very well. <laughs> I feel like they did balance out like the shimmer versus matte very well. It's just straight down the middle, half and half, and the tones are really nice where we have light, medium, dark. So for a quad, I do think you can do a lot with this. It's also one of the only Flower Beauty, actually probably the only Flower Beauty eyeshadow that I have, so I definitely wanna hold on to that. I really hope we end up <laughs> actually decluttering this drawer. I feel like the keep pile is getting a little bit heavier than the declutter pile. Okay, we have another one of these Wet n Wild five pan palettes. This is in Walking on Eggshells. Again, this is definitely a keep. This is a collection staple. It has been since I started wearing makeup because the original Walking on Eggshells was like a $1 trio that Wet n Wild sold at the drugstore. It got upgraded to a four pan and now we have it in the new five pan palette. Right, we only have a few, oh, <laughs> speaking of Walking on Eggshells, this is the older version. This is the four pan palette that they sold for a while before they finally upgraded to five pan. Now this one I might go ahead and declutter because obviously it's old. And I do feel, I'm not 100% sure on this, so don't quote me, but I do feel like they've upgraded the formulas as well. So even though we have the same shades, this in general, it could be because this is old, but <laughs> this just performs better than the four pan. We have this multi-cube from I'm Meme or I'm Mimi. Hmm, I don't know. This is a K-Beauty brand on Amazon. Now this is expensive for what it is. This is a $21 uh, kind of makeup box. So we have this eyeshadow quad and then you lift it up and you have like a matching blush. I still don't think it's 
worth at all over $10 maybe. And you know, I do think that it is a little bit more gimmicky than it is useful. I don't know, I mean, it's definitely minimalistic and tight space friendly or travel friendly, but I don't know, that price really gives me sticker shock for 20, I think it's like 21 or $23. And the blush didn't show up all that well on my skin tone. With K-Beauty, you don't get a lot of face products that work very well for anybody uh, deeper than light medium. <laughs> I think I'm gonna go ahead and declutter this as well. We have another one of these little multi-cubes. So that other one was more peachy. This one's more bronzy. Again, I just, <laughs> what is that? That is like almost my skin color. I mean, they're cute, but come on. Okay, we have an empty Z palette, so I'll just keep that, put that aside, that's not gonna count. Another one hiding from me. We have another one of these e.l.f. bite-sized palettes. This one is in Cream and Sugar. Now, I did kind of put this to the test against the Wet n Wild Walking on Eggshells because they're clearly very similar. Just in general, they are more neutral. They've kind of got a pop of bronze in there. But with Wet n Wild, I just feel like even though it's just one more shade, that really unlocks the versatility. And and for some reason, I just felt more limited with the e.l.f. palette, especially because the two mattes that we have in the e.l.f. palette are light and dark. There's not like a mid-tone to like do any kind of lid or transition work with. So I don't necessarily know if I want to keep it, if I'm already going to keep the Wet n Wild. Mm, I definitely don't reach for this at all. <laughs> so I think that's my answer. This NYX palette, like we have a love-hate relationship because this is consistently the most sold or most popular best-selling eyeshadow palette at the drugstore. This is particularly the Warm Neutrals palette from NYX. They have a few of them in this ultimate format. I'm just not the hugest eyeshadow fan when it comes to NYX and their formula. I feel like the formula is very stiff. You can build it up and you can get something really pretty out of it. I just don't think it's as easy as say the Wet n Wild formula or even the Maverick formula. In fact, this Maverick palette is incredibly similar. Wow, I have not realized that. Looking at them side by side, they are almost identical in color scheme, but this formula is so much softer and more pigmented. Let me just go ahead and kind of dip into a few of these. Like I always reach for this thinking like this is such a beautiful palette, but I don't know, it's just always such a bummer to work with. It just feels stiff in the pan. I don't feel like I'm picking up a lot. Let's try this light purple shimmer. That one's not so bad. It's just not as punchy, you know what I mean? I'm on the fence about whether or not I'm gonna keep this. If I do keep it, it's not gonna necessarily be to use. It's going to be to have because of my job and talking about it being the number one drugstore eyeshadow palette. Ugh, and finally, we have the Tarte uh, Tartlet in Bloom palette. This is a palette that is very often on sale during the Ulta 21 Days of Beauty sale. That's when I got mine. And that's why I hold on to it, aside from the fact that it's one of my favorite neutral palettes ever. I think out of all higher end makeup brands, Tarte makes my favorite eyeshadow formula with their Amazonian clay. It is so buttery smooth. They blend beautifully. They last all day. So here are just a few. Now this palette is definitely more cool toned, which I've just been getting so many comments asking about cool toned palettes. See, that's a champagne. That is what a champagne should do. Oh, so beautiful. I just really like what they did here. It is a perfectly, perfectly balanced palette between tones and finishes. Like this is the perfect neutral palette in my eye. Okay, so now that we've gotten through all of the palettes, the mini palettes in this drawer, we are left with the singles and glitters. I have to admit to you, that I'm getting a little nervous because I think I've kept more than I've decluttered. Overall, I think I am at least weeding through some of these that I just have not touched in so long. So let's go through these. First, I wanna just pick out these Ulta Beauty metallic and matte cream eyeshadows. I talked about these for the first time during my waterproof drugstore makeup video. I took them in the pool with me and I was blown away. These go on with such beautiful color, they blend out easily, but they really truly are waterproof. So go ahead and check out that video if you wanna see how they perform in the pool. But I was so shocked with how 
smudge proof they were. Literally did not budge, did not fade, did not run at all. I love using this shimmery one. This one's called Pretty in Pink as like a halo highlight over this mauve one. That one was called Throwback. And then I have this matte pink one called Flower Child. I used this when I recreated Selena Gomez's Rare Beauty tutorial with drugstore products. I really hope they expand this line because they have just such beautiful colors and they perform more foolproof than any high-end waterproof eyeshadow product that I've tried. So definitely gonna keep these. <laughs> I don't know why the color tattoos aren't as popular anymore as they used to be. These had such a chokehold on the beauty community in the early 2010s. It was crazy. Everybody used these as eyeshadow bases or just all over lid shades. This one is in the color High Roller and it is such a beautiful bronze that I love using just all over the lid, smoke it out just for an easy one shade look. And these are totally crease proof. I'm not sure if they're technically waterproof, but I can't see them not being waterproof just because of how well they last. This is just such a beautiful shade and it stays dimensional even if you're just using the one color. If you blend this all over the eye and like into the crease, it'll look like you have more than one eyeshadow on. I really wanna get more of these. I think they're so underrated, which is funny because they were so hyped up back in the day. These are the Maybelline Color Strikes and I bought these kind of for the same purpose, for just a product that would be really easy to swipe over the lid, blend out with my fingers for a simple look and while they do work well for that, I really just don't like the application process and the packaging. It is like a loose powder eyeshadow within this part and it comes off on this sponge applicator which then you can wipe on or apply onto your eye and I don't feel like it applies it very opaque. I would have much rather been able to like go in with my finger but then you can blend it out. And don't get me wrong, it's very pretty. It's very blendable. I love this shade is called Hustle and you can kind of build it up. It's just the sponge applicator does nothing to, to really maximize what this shadow can do. This one is called Spark because I also love using just rose gold shimmers all over the lid for something easy and glowy. And I just can't get any pigment off of this stupid sponge. It just takes way too long to build up. And also looking at this now, it looks a heck of a lot like the color tattoo that I just kept. So I think I'm good to declutter these. Okay, we do have this e.l.f liquid eyeshadow in the shade Disco Queen, and this is gonna be a keep. This is not something I reach for often because it is like this silver holographic liquid eyeshadow, but it's definitely something I love having on hand for when I wanna do something a little festive, a little sparkly. It doesn't necessarily go on opaque, as you can see. I more so use it as a topper, but it's just such a fun glitter to have, especially around festival season or even the holidays. So I'm gonna go ahead and keep that. Another product that I've really liked using as all over shades, though I haven't dipped into them in a while, I'll be honest, these Morphe 2, what are they called? Jelly Eye Shimmers. So these are definitely different than say the color tattoos. These have more of a jelly consistency. They're very slick and I'm, I don't know how I'm gonna do this with my nails. I think I might have to go in with my knuckle. I'm happy to report that these have not dried out since I got them. I believe these came out in 2020, either 2019 or 2020. And one of my main concerns was that it was gonna dry out, it was gonna lose that jelly consistency that makes it so glossy looking on the eye, but it never did. Look at that, oh. Beautiful, so that's really nice to either use as a highlight or all over the lid. It does have this sort of gold iridescent shimmer to it. This one is called Bright Idea. Yeah, I was really worried that these were gonna dry up within like a week and a half and they never did. Now this one is a little bit more glittery. It's called Confetti. Again, this isn't necessarily something that I would use like all the time, but it's fun to have when I wanna do something special. And this one's more of a topper. I don't know if I would necessarily use this on its own. As you can see, it doesn't go on with a lot of like pigment behind it like the other one does. It definitely just gives you this purple iridescent holographic shimmer that is so fun. 
So we will be keeping both of those. Okay, we have another Morphe too. I didn't realize that I had three of them actually. So this one is called Bolt. Oh, okay, I remember this one is a little bit more berry and shimmery. Now this one I think might be my least used out of all three. Yep, this one still has its jelly consistency as well. So this one has like a subtly smoky pigment to it. As you can see, it's like a very sheer purpley gray. And then it's got sort of the same glitter as the confetti shade. I just think it ends up looking patchy because the pigment base is so sheer. So this is like my least reached for. I think this one I will go ahead and declutter. Two of these L'Oreal Brilliant Eyes. These are really, really gorgeous metallic liquid eyeshadows that I really like using in the summer, especially with this gold one. This is molten gold. Oh my gosh, how breathtaking is that? So that shade is called Precious Lava. And then I also have Bronze Light. Beautiful. So this one's a little bit more glittery, whereas this one is just solid pigment gold. But as I was saying, typically with liquid eyeshadows, I use them for the convenience of just kind of slapping on and blending out like that all over the lid. And it just makes a beautiful monochromatic lid look. I think I'm gonna keep the gold and ditch the bronze just because I've got so much bronze going on in what I've kept so far. I don't necessarily need it in like this ultra glittery format. I think I've got two ColourPop Super Shock sh shingles, <laughs> Super Shock singles. I have the shades all in and set to stun. I will say that like the majority of the time when you see like a rose gold type look on my eye and somebody comments saying, what are you wearing on your eyes? Can we have a tutorial? It's literally just this color all over my lids. So set to stun. It's actually, mm, I don't know, is, would you consider this a rose gold or just kind of a medium rose shade. Love that shade for all over the lid. Now I am considering decluttering set to stun because I bought it for the same purpose of like a really easy purple smoky eye look, but it doesn't quite give that uh, impact whenever I actually go to use it. See how it doesn't really apply as rich as it looks in the pot? Yeah, that one was kind of a letdown. I think I'm gonna declutter this. Okay, then what have we got here? Oh, this is from the Misguided Makeup Collection. It is cruelty-free vegan from the fashion brand Misguided. They launched their own makeup brand last year. This is another cream eyeshadow in a pot. This is called It's Lit. And it's sort of more of a copper one. Now this has dried out significantly. See if we can get anything out of it. Yeah, that definitely doesn't have the impact that it used to. Still a beautiful shade, but it's like half the pigment that it is supposed to have. Okay, so we've got a few more liquid shadows here. I have three from Koki Cosmetics. Now, I've really been getting into more Koki lately. I don't quite remember if I loved these or not, let's just go ahead and swatch them. It's their Crystal Fusion Liquid Eyeshadows. I think I remember these being better as toppers versus something you can kind of put all over the lid and expect a solid color out of. Yeah, that's really pretty, but definitely not like an opaque swipe of color. So that one actually kind of reminds me of the Elf one. It's just sort of a silver with a holographic shimmer to it. And I think I like the Elf one a bit better. There's just a little more punch to it. So I'll declutter this. Now this one is called Galactic. This one looks Looks really fun, like blue and purple. Ooh, okay, wait. Mm hmm, interesting. For a second, I thought it was gonna go on pretty opaque, but there is sort of a smoky pigment underneath. Interesting. This would probably look really beautiful over a black shadow. I'm gonna keep it and play around with it. And then we have this pink one. This one is called Super Natural. It looks like pink with maybe gold glitter to it. Okay, it's like pink with holographic glitter, actually. It's not bad. I just don't like how patchy it is. It would definitely need to be applied over something. So I'm gonna declutter this one. So we have two of these Juicy Couture liquid eyeshadows. I did do a whole video about the Juicy Couture makeup line at Forever 21. I believe everything is $12. We've got this one in Champagne Showers. I just love this packaging. How Y2K nostalgic is it? Oh, whoa, that's beautiful. <laughs> that is Gorgeous. See, that's what I like to see out of liquid eyeshadows. I want to see it paint. <laughs> and then we have the, my fur is faux, which is a sort of lilac pink 
that's gorgeous as well, gonna keep that. <laughs> I think I'm gonna go ahead and declutter this just because it's actually pretty old, but if you're looking for a really nice, cheap glitter liquid eyeshadow, the NYX Glitter Coals are really, really nice to work with. This actually I identified as a dupe for a Too Faced liquid glitter eyeshadow. How crazy is that? That's really beautiful. You can totally use this on its own. You can really build it up and get that um, opaque coverage, or you can sort of blend it out, use it as a topper, just get that that gold glitter going very very versatile but yeah I've had this for a while okay we have a couple eyeshadow crayons from pixie these are the endless shade sticks and looks like they're in a couple of brown shades we have matte cocoa which is a matte brown and then a more shimmery copper glaze wait hold on I think I still have some <laughs> makeup remover on my arm Mm, no, I think that's just the crayon. I don't think I'm a fan of that. <laughs> now this is pretty. I could see myself using this. I feel like it's so similar to so many shades that we've kept so far. It's just obviously I haven't kept it in a crayon format. You know, I like this formula, the shimmery one, not so much the matte one, but I'm not like totally in love with this shade. So I think I'm gonna declutter it. Now I have several of these AOA butter creams. These can be used as a cream shadow or a gel eyeliner. And when you first get these, they are bomb. The pigmentation is off the charts, the finish is beautiful, and they will not budge. However, what I have found is that they dry up so easily. Okay, here's one. And this is what happens too. It like dries up and shrinks in the pot. Oh my God, wait a second. That is insane, it is rock hard. Oh my. Okay, so obviously that's one that's been open. Okay, this one's a little less dried out. Still pretty, pretty dry. And I maybe open these twice ever. Eh, pretty dried out. I love these but something must be done about the packaging. All that's left now is glitter. I always hold on to this glitter thinking that I'll use it for like holiday looks and fun party looks and whatever, whatever, and I never, ever, ever do. I just don't really have the patience that's needed to work with glitter, but I think I'll keep a few that really, really call to me. Like this one is called Antique Pink from AOA. Ugh. That is beautiful, but also AOA, can you put a sifter on this thing? Like, <laughs> what do you think you're doing just putting this bomb of glitter in this tiny package? Okay. These BH ones, these are definitely larger glitter particles. I've held on to them for so long and I absolutely never use them. So I'm gonna go ahead and declutter those. Oh, we have an AOA loose pigment. That's interesting. I don't remember using this. I wanna dip my finger in so bad, but I know that it's gonna be the worst idea. Ugh. It's like pillowy inside. It's kind of like this purplish. <gasps> oh, it's so beautiful. Oh my gosh. Okay, what the heck? <laughs> I don't remember ever having this. It's almost like a creamy pigment. Once you start actually blending it out with a brush, it's got like a creamy consistency to it. Huh, interesting rediscovery. <laughs> oh wow, that is beautiful. Bet you the reason why I never tried it again after I put it in this drawer is because of the packaging. That's gonna, yeah, that's gonna be rough. This is a really beautiful rose gold. This is called Rosaline. See, here's the thing is I look at these and I'm like starstruck by how beautiful they are. If I were ever actually doing my makeup, the fear in me of opening this and getting this all over, oh, look at that plume. You know what? This would actually work really well for nails and not makeup. I think that is a great way to repurpose these. Um, my mother-in-law does my nails and she does nails for some of her friends as well. So I think I'm gonna set these aside for her. And then finally, we've got two NYX shimmer downs. Oh no, we have one shimmer down and one glitter from NYX. The shimmer down is a pigment. Now here's how you do a loose pigment AOA. You have a sifter on the top so it doesn't just come pluming out. Oh, is this just like a sparkly white? Eh, it's kind of boring. I don't necessarily need that in like its own pot. And then we have this blue glitter. Now this I might keep, especially for like Hanukkah looks. Oh, beautiful. <gasps> uh, and the fact that it's got a sifter on it. Okay, obviously this needs glitter glue. <laughs> this is not the kind of glitter that'll stick without glue, but this just seems like it'd be a lot easier to work with considering the packaging. 
So before I show you the final decluttered and organized eyeshadow drawer, I want to give a shout out to our sponsor, Click Her. Click Her is a mobile app I've been loving lately. It cuts through the oversaturated social media feeds to give you just a handful of super click-worthy content every day. You'll find beauty, fashion, and lifestyle posts from smaller creators and stuff you just might not see scrolling through your social media feeds that are controlled by algorithms. It's a great app that helps you discover up-to-date trends and topics and it's free in the App Store. The download link will be in the description below. Thanks, Clicker. All right, so this is sort of a work in progress, but this is what I came up with in terms of the new organization for this drawer, which I think works out really well. I have my singles on this side, so we have all the liquids and creams that we kept and a few of those glitters and pigments. In the middle, I have most of the mini palettes, anything that can kind of stand up straight in the drawer. And there is some room in here so that I can kind of flip through them and then anything else that was just kind of a different shape or a little bit too big for one more um, organizer. So for now, this totally works for me. We'll see as this drawer, you know, starts to fill up again, if it makes sense to do something else with the organization. But for now, this looks so much better. This is so much easier to get through. I can see what I have. So even though I didn't get rid of as many palettes as I thought I would, I feel like I got rid of just enough to kind of weed out the fluff, keep what I love, and now I can actually see it. So I don't forget that I own something beautiful and then it just kind of gets shoved to the back. Well, I am super happy with how that turned out. The drawer looks great, but I am dying to declutter my larger eyeshadow palettes now. Although I realized that I still need to do part two of my lipstick declutter. So that's probably what's gonna come next. If you enjoyed this video and you love all things budget beauty, please consider subscribing and hitting the bell icon. Today's shout out goes to Christine. Thanks for being a member of the Slashed Squad. And join me over in this video next where I share six hair tips to get less frizz and more shine in winter. I'll see you over there. Bye.